So here we are, gathered again for our annual ritual in Yateley Common, about 30 miles west of London, on a disused airfield. Oh, that's all for your other masters, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, okay. No, that's my egg. Oh, yeah. Do you have any serious doubts about me, then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then you stamped on it that we're blocking his bridle path. Yeah, Don actually, actually just said we're clearing it as fast as we can. Yeah. And he said, well, you realise you're breaking a bylaw, and da 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 And then he got a bit nasty, and do you want to... Farnborough Club's been active on HF Field Day since 1974 and we have always entered the single band section and gone for the single band award. We've been quite successful, we've won 80 metres and 40 metres. In fact, in the last five years, we haven't been out of the top two in the band that we've entered. I'll give it the tape thing to measure out the feet. Um, yes, that's yeah. right. That's right. Exactly what that's we that's that's to do. That's it coming. The aerials that we used were a half wave dipole at about 40 feet for 160 metres and two V beams on 15 metres. The A station team is Don 3MKG, Ian 3RRA, Chris 3SVL, Anister 3VAA, Ray 4FON and Bob 4HZV. We did the AC power from the generator to a battery charging tent and then all distribution was then done uh, for transmitters and receivers at 12 volts. The A station running the now famous G3RRA stroke P, the B station running the core G4FRS stroke P. It's now 
coming towards the start of the contest and the B station are just uh, trying out the gear whilst the A station is still finishing off its aerials. Well, <laughs> what is it now? 20 past 4 and we've been at it since 9 o'clock, uh, no, 10 o'clock this morning. Um, we're, yeah, we're just about there, we've just about got all four aerials going. But uh, it's a big business putting up four aerials for the field there. How's yeah. ever? With a bit of luck we'll be there, half an hour to go. The A station G3RRA stroke P in the orange tent, the B station G4FRS Farber Radio Society in the green tent, with one or two other tents on site, notably the cooking tent and the all-important little square room. This is the catering facilities, uh, ably provided by Jeff G8UEL, uh, with the food being prepared and uh, just heated on site. to uh, yeah, see if we've worked the station yeah. before, you see. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, five six, six seven, yeah. eight, nine, ten, eleven, one, twelve. Way through the Generator in. No, they're quite cold, I'll put them in here. Yes, the fact you left it alone for the time being because they're um, trying to run um, aerial checks for the whole world. We've only got six minutes. So yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. Good three. Well, I'll tell you what, you About this point, we realised that one of the V-beams had uh, a problem on VSWR. We eventually tracked the problem down to an open circuit in a PL259 connector. Activity in the uh, V-station was hit an all-time high. Stuff, right. 
Well, it must be wrong. Because we went out like that. You did a jamboree, one, two. We should have rotated round there. No, no. Where have you gone wrong? Let's be on. Hang on. M no, MKG no, shouldn't have come on there. Hey, still. We've got mushrooms and we've got carrots, so I can see in the dark tonight. And spuds to keep me trim. <laughs> So, dusk is drawing on and uh, the A station is currently working as hard as possible on 160 metres. So morning comes, and Jeff starts to sort out breakfast. Bacon, eggs, sausages, bread and butter, and marmalade. Did you? Yeah. I bet it went down well this morning. Very well indeed. Yes, especially mine. <laughs> very tedious towards the Sunday afternoon to just keep at it and try and get the last QSO out. Right. Uh, Can you mark that? 
repeat. Yeah. Yes. Now is that a... is that K? Okay. okay. That's, well, that's, that's it. That's it. That's well gone. Yep. and basically done a run through, but it's a it's, top plan is complete, um, but of course these are only the same scores. As Ray said, we used the uh, half-wave dipole 50 foot above ground. We had 95 QSOs, which yielded 258 points. To, sorry, 658. <laughs> the best DX was, was uh, PY1RO, and if anyone's interested, we've actually got it on tape down there with him on side band. Now, the only year we can the number of points is last year because I changed the scoring system uh, last year and you can see we're roughly 20% up on the points of the winning station last year on 160. If you compare QSOs you can see we're doing pretty well in the QSO stakes. Now on 15, a very very different story and of course it's not necessarily fair <coughs> to compare them because conditions can be so up and down. 139 QSOs, which conclusion I think is if, if everyone else has done about the same as us on 15, then, then we could be in with a chance. A lot of people would have gone on 15 and gone straight off because it was relatively dead. Top band, I would guess that this sort of 658 points has probably put us somewhere in the top two, uh, hopefully first, um, depending on how other people go. So that's how it looks. Now where's Brian? This is that police station, Brian. Well, this was the first year, I think, that the club had made a serious uh, police station entry, in other words, one where we were out to <coughs> do as well as we could. Um, it was interesting that um, no one of the operators had operated an HF field day before. Obviously, we were grateful to the A station people who gave us some. Overall, uh, overall, the QSO rate was approximately 10 an hour, which over the 24 hour period is not bad at all because there were periods where we would spend a terrific amount of time simply going to TQ or looking. Um, we were assaulted by two stations, and it always <laughs> happens. Uh, one chap that we christened uh, down the lavatory man, <laughs> who uh, not only tried to pinch our frequency, but tried to work us four times during the day. And boy, were we grateful to you. Particularly at the end. Much, I think. And yes, particularly when you took it all down for us. And also thanks to uh, the, our friend here from the Scouts who came along and did yes. very yes. yes. well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Catering this year was super. Yeah. Yeah. Where's my yeah. bit of pizza, please? <laughs> <laughs> I won't take the credit for that. It, the food uh, oh, was prepared. Well, the the food was very, very welcome. And uh, oh, no, it's very good. Very, very good. Did you have an inspection? No. Go back to our aerial then. I, yeah. I, just to wrap it no, up, I, I would say well. I think we all had a super weekend. Uh, yeah. The operators, the people that directed the station, and the tent, and everything else. Thank you very much, and please come again next year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, next year is one in a month's time. Well. <laughs> CQ, CQ, calling all radio amateurs and shortwave listeners. This is GB2RS, Basingstoke, the news broadcasting station of the Radio Society of Great Britain, operating from the station of Golf 8 Charlie, Kilo, November. 
And here is the amateur radio news for Sunday the 24th of August. First, the National Field Day results, starting with those of local interest. The Farnborough Radio Society have obtained notable results this year, their A station being first on top band and third on the 15 metre band. The Farnborough Radio Society B station obtained a fifth place on the 80 metre band. The overall winner who received the National Field Day trophy is the Swansea Amateur Radio Society with a score of 2,933 points.